Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we are continuing the work on the Deep Space Network 34 meter uh, waveguide. I'll probably end up calling it a radio telescope from now on, just so you know. It's easier to say than waveguide. Alright, so here is, here is the scope, the radio, uh, radio telescope. This is the template for the um, for the dish. It's actually uh, a textured uh, series of faces. Okay, but we are going to create the frame that goes around that today. So you're going to learn how I make a frame, and you're also going to see how the uh, radial array works and we'll see how far we get today hopefully we don't make this longer than it needs to be um, I'm still working on pieces of the entire uh, radio telescope right now right now I'm working on the counterweight system making that more realistic if you remember from the previous video this is uh, a 3d print model that I have and I'm converting that into more realistic so let's look at the frame that we're getting ready to build this is our prototype image this is the telescope that we're working on and this is the framing system that goes around the telescope so it has uh, it has a series of trusses which are these big triangular parts all right it has an intermediate beam that's up against the telescope. In between two trusses, there's diagonal braces that go up to the intermediate. Okay? So it's a series of triangles. All right? We have the triangle that's between the trusses. Okay? Or the, the beam in the truss. And then we have a triangle. It's kind of a twisted triangle that makes these cross beams go up. All right. And then there's the actual truss itself, which is kind of a triangle or trape trapezoid shape. All right. So let's get modeling. So first of all, we are going to select the dish. And we, I believe, are going to go into edit mode by hitting tab and I'm going to do a tilde T to get a top down and I'm going to edge select which I do and I'm going to select one that is going along the Y axis it doesn't matter which one if I go along the X that's fine I just have to remember which one I'm doing alright so I'm going to select an edge and I'm going to make a copy of it with shift D and I'm going to hit escape so I don't move it but then I'm going to hit P to make a new object out of that selection and here I have it it calls it reflector screen 001 because that's the object that it came out of I'm going to get out of edit mode with the tab I'm going to select that new object and we are going to call this let's call this um, I'm going to use short names just so we know I'm going to call it FR for uh, frame uh, let's call it FT for frame template all right now with frame template let's get that selected where it's in alphabetical order so that's why I can't find it anymore all right so with frame FT selected this is our template for our frame all right so what I want to do is go into edit mode and I want to edge select, select that edge. And I want to break that up into uh, a few pieces, okay? Because there's webbing that goes down uh, on this particular structure, 
okay so I want to create anchor points for each one of the web pieces so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a loop cut on this edge I'm going to control R and I'm going to create 10 subdivisions so I'm there's one automatically and then my scroll wheel uh, I'm adding as I turn the wheel so that's two three four five six seven eight nine ten then I'm gonna hit enter and hit escape so I don't inadvertently move anything so if I turn vertices on there are our 12 sections now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven sections that's right so we have 11 sections of this template now I'm gonna make a couple more copies of this of this shape okay uh, of this object okay so I'm in edit mode I'm gonna do a tilde L to get a straight on left side view of the telescope here and what I'm gonna do is hit a select everything and I'm gonna shift D escape so I don't move it now there is an exact duplicate of that edge with those vertices in it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it down two meters because I want this edge to be two meters down and then I'm going to make this edge of our frame a half a meter down because it's kind of a trapezoid looking thing so let's with that new one selected let's do a G Z and we're gonna do a minus two meters okay so there we have our our copy so if I whoops let's try this again let's GZ minus two I forgot to hit enter that's why I didn't commit what I did so there we have the offset for this particular object okay now what we're going to do is we are going to also go back to that original object and I'm going to do an alt select okay I'm didn't I, I held down the alt key selected a vertice and it selected all of these right okay now I'm going to make a new copy of that shift D escape so I don't move it and then I'm going to hit P to create a new selection and we're gonna we're gonna leave it at FT0 because it's a it's still a temporary part of our frame so let me get out of edit mode and let's go to this new FT001 that we've created all right now what I want to do if you notice our origin for these new objects is way down here that will come into play later all right but what I want to do is I want to take this new one that we have and I want to rotate it along the Z axis 10 degrees okay so I'm gonna R Z 10 so that is move that new that new um, uh, template edge 10 degrees off of our original one all right now we're gonna get out of edit mode no actually when I was in it I wasn't in edit mode we're gonna select our original FT and we're gonna do some more work on that so let's go into edit mode and I'm gonna go tilde L to get a side view of it and we can turn FT01 off for now and I'm going to zoom in and we're going to create another well we're going to move something so let's create let's select this vertice right here remember I want this vertice uh, I want it um, a half a meter below our original vertice up on top so I am since it's two meters below it now I'm going to G Z 1.5 now notice that it did not move any of these uh, vertices here 
we need to create a working work a working work plane or we need a new work plane to create uh, to work with these vertices right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this top vertice and this bottom vertice let me turn ghost mode on just in case something's hidden behind another object all right so I have these two vertices selected and I'm going to hit F to add an edge between those two now this isn't part of the object this is this is I'm creating something as a construction line type of object alright so with that selected I'm just gonna hit P and I'm gonna make a new object out of that selection and it calls it FT002 we're just, we're not, I'm not going to change names for right now, but it's its own object. So I'm going to go out of edit mode and I'm going to select that new object. Okay. And I'm going to go into edit mode for that object and I'm going to select edge. And I am going to come up here to the transformation orientation. And I'm going to add an edge. I already have an edge. I wonder what that one's for. But I'm going to hit up. Oh, that's just probably from something else. So we'll just get rid of that one. So I'm going to hit this plus, And it creates one that says edge. Now, what that just did was it changes the working plane of what I'm working on. By default... The green line is the y-axis, and the red line is the x-axis, and the z-axis is pointed up straight up, okay? So if we were down here, z or z is going in this direction, all right? y is going in this direction, x is going in this direction, all right? Now, since we now have a new working plane off of this edge, something's changed the x axis has not changed it still is per it's still parallel with the original x okay because that line is perpendicular to the x axis so the x axis is still parallel with the current with with the original x axis okay the y axis has changed a little bit instead of going in this direction it is now following the direction of that edge okay so it's kind of pointing up okay just like that the z axis has really changed it is perpendicular now to this line this edge that we just created so the z-axis now goes in this direction all right so why is that important well we're getting ready to align vertices on the same plane so let's go let's get out of edit mode of our working plane and select our let's select our object that we've moved some vertices and go into edit mode turn on vertice and let's change our view to the left on view now with the edge work plane active what I want to do is I want to change the transformation pivot point to the 3d cursor now the 3d cursor is over here right now but what we need to do is we need to select a vertice, either this one, either the first one, or, this, or the last one that's actually along this line. So I'm going to select this first one, and I'm going to shift S, and I'm going to move the 3D cursor to that location. Okay? Now, with the transformation pivot point, on 3d cursor I am going to select all these vertices that I need to move so I'm going to select all of these 
Now I don't have to select this last one because it is along this line already. But the ones that are not along that line, all I'm going to simply do is I'm going to S Z zero enter and that moves every one of those vertices along that line because that line is the Z axis zero okay so that's what that S Z zero key functions did it moves everything up that I have selected on that same plane so that creates a nice line along here okay so if I rotate around all those vertices are following that line now let's go ahead and turn off FT002 because we no longer need it and let us let us go back to our global transformation orientation so now Z is straight up why it, it's everything's oriented normal now okay it's not based off of this series of edges we just use that to get all of these in a line okay now we are going to create some polygons by closing in some things so with FT selected and in edit mode I'm going to select these two vertices at the end and I'm going to hit F to add a uh, I'm adding uh, an edge and I'm going to select these two bottom ones and hit F to add an edge down there too so now I have a I suppose you would call this a is is this a parallelogram no it's not a parallel parallelogram it's a trapezoid all right now let's turn on FT001 which is this line over here okay and what I'm gonna do is I am going to create an another face okay or, or another series of polygons so I am going to select whoops oh that's a that's a different object that's a different object okay I got I got a plan please hold all right I need to make a copy of something all right this I'm in edit mode of FT and what I want is I want a copy of this top line all these edges on this line okay and I'm going to sh shift D escape P make a new copy so now I have FT003 but I only want that temporarily because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of edit mode and I'm going to take that new FT003 I'm going to hold control select FT001 and I'm gonna control J and make those together so they're they're it's a it's an object okay the, there's two series of edges now in FT001 now let's call let's change some names because now it's gonna get confusing let's make FT FT top okay and let's call FT, FT, let's call it, um, let's call it uh, side. Okay. Now, I'm going to go into FT top, go into edit mode, and I'm going to turn on vertice, and I'm going to select this vertice. And I'm going to select this vertice, hit F, and I'm going to close the, connect those two. And then I'm going to come down to these down here and do the exact same thing to these bottom two. Hit F to close those in with an, a new edge. Okay. See how that's working? All right. Now, we're going to create one more. We're going to take a copy of... Uh, this edge and we're going to take this 
bottom edge and we're going to make copies of those and put those into a new object all right but these over here on this one okay so let's copy these edges edge select and let's just copy all of these down just like that all right I don't want this end one but let's shift D escape P new selection so now it's FT top and what I'm gonna do is make this one I'm gonna call this FT diag okay for diagonal now I need to go into FT side remember FT side I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to make a I'm going to select a make a copy of all those on the bottom. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to shift D escape make a copy of them. Hit P new selection and that's FT side 001. Get out of edit mode. I'm going to select the 001 hold control hold diag and I'm gonna control J and put those together then I'm gonna select FT diag okay see how those are see how those are like they're kind of weird looking but that's gonna make sense later I'm gonna go into edit mode of this and I'm gonna turn on vertice and I am going to select this vertice and this one and hit F and join those together and I'm going to select this one down here and this one here at the end and I'm going to hit F there okay to close those in now I want to create uh, I want to create webbing on these objects okay these three objects will make more sense when I add faces to them so let's turn off the disk the reflector so we can see our object a little better and let's turn off I think that's elevation assembly let's turn off the elevation assembly but if you you can kinda get uh, you can kinda get the feel of what this frame is shaped like it's a triangle down at the bottom uh, a very steep triangle here but it's a very short and long triangle at the top okay this face right here is our original trapezoid and then the top just looks like a fan part of a fan all right they'll make sense when I put faces on them. all right so let's turn off diag and turn off top so we're back to just our original trapezoid shape this is our truss okay so what I'm gonna do is I am so I don't lose any of what I've done I am going to take side and I'm going to shift D escape to make us make a copy of it all right and I'm gonna call this one truss and that's what we're gonna work with from now on for that particular piece so I'm gonna turn off FT side because it was temporary and let's come down to truss okay now it says truss 003 let me get rid of that let me get rid of the that part all right there we go so now we have truss now I'm gonna go into edit mode I'm going to go edge select select all and I'm gonna hit F and now we have a face okay so I'm gonna get out of edit mode we're gonna come back to truss here in a second we need to go up to FT top turn that one on and we need to make a copy of the FT top. So I'm going to shift D escape and it makes a copy and we're going to call FT top 
we're going to call it truss top. Okay. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and turn off FT top and let's turn on FT diag and make a copy of that. Shift D escape. All right. Rename it. Let's call it truss diag. So now and then turn off FT diag. So we are our temps are our temps are still good if anything goes wrong. Now we can come down here and all our truss pieces are together just like the FTs. But now the names make sense. Let's go into truss diag. Let's go into edit mode. Now, before I put faces on truss diag, I need to turn off these two so we can see it. But I also need to do something different because the weird shape of this, I want to, I want to retain the actual concrete shape or steel shape, so to speak. So in edit mode, I'm going to turn on vertices. And what we're going to do is we are simply going to come up on the top. Okay. I think that's correct. Yeah, we're going to come up on top view uh, till the T takes me to the top. And I'm going to select these four vertices, hit F. I'm going to select these four, hit F. And I'm doing four at a time. And I'm putting faces inside of this object. Okay, just like that. Now, if I rotate, you can kind of see it had this shape now, right? Okay, so if I get out of edit mode, we have this, this propeller looking shape, kind of. And if I turn truss back on, all right, you see it has a face like this, all right? Now, let's do that top piece. Let's turn off diag, turn off truss, turn off turn on truss top and let's go into edit mode of truss top got to select it first and then let's go tilde t for top view and let's do the same thing we did with the diags select four hit select four vertices hit f to close those faces in okay fill those faces with an f Okay. So there we have the top. Okay. So if I put all three of these together, those shapes will actually make a l probably a little bit more sense now. Let me turn off ghost mode, make them opaque. All right. Now the only problem is see how they're <clears throat> see how they're kind of still a ghost mode is because since I copied an element from our original uh, radio disc or our dish it's using the same material that screen material so let's go to materials and just get rid of the screen material okay that's for that one and we need to do the same for diag. So let's get rid of that. And we need to do the same for truss. Let's get rid of that. So now they're they're kind of solid. And you can you can see right down the tube. Alright. These are our templates for making our frame. Okay. Let's concentrate on the actual truss. So let's go to tilde L to get that side on view and let's turn off diag and turn off top for now. Now, the truss is made out of two pieces. We have, we have steel that goes up and around and then we have an interior web. 
all right so it, it's it's two pieces all right so I'm going to make a copy of truss shift D escape so I don't move it and now I have truss 004 and what we're going to do is take 004 and we're going to call this web okay and we'll and we'll work with that in a bit okay now let's go turn off web for now and go up to truss we are going to go into edit mode and we are going to go polygon select and we are going to do an eye we're going to create an inset okay and if i move my mouse i can do it by hand right okay but i want to give it an actual size and i gotta think of what actual size i want to use um i'm gonna hmm, how big do i want these uh, 0 0.05 is that good let me see I think 0 0.05 will be eh, let's make them a little bigger let's uh, control Z and let's do another I and just go 0 0.075 let's just make them a little bit bigger all right so with truss I've created this system like this but I want to get rid of this this middle uh, polygon so I'm just gonna hit delete face so now I just have the outline just like that all right now let's go over to web uh, no let's don't let's do let's give it some thickness all right so it is 0.75 thick so we're gonna make it 0.1 wide all right so what I want to do is I'm in edit mode I'm going to select this vertice I'm gonna shift s I'm going to move the 3D cursor to that location. Okay. Then I'm going to get out and I'm going to right click and I'm going to change the origin to the 3D cursor. All right. There. We're going to move the 3D cursor later on to this actual empty that's sitting over here. But for now, for editing purposes, I want it right there because right now it's in the middle of this y axis okay technically and i want it 0.1 meters thick all right so i need to move it in one direction 0 0.05 trust me <laughs> or not all right so go into edit mode no i don't have to go into edit mode i can do it right here with everything we are going to G X uh, 0 0.05. Got it? Now what we're going to do is we're going to give it some thickness. I am going to add a solidify modifier. So let's go to, we first, we got to find out if it's going to, uh, solidify it in the right direction so let's go over to uh, face orientation and we want red in this case red is our friend because it's going to solidify in the red direction okay so come over here to modifiers go to modifier go to solidify modifier come up to thickness and type in 0.1 meter Okay, so there is our truss frame. Okay, and we can go ahead and apply that modifier. And then turn off your face orientation. And save your project. That's always good. Alright, so now we have the frame of our truss.
Now we need to make our webbing that's inside of our truss. Now the one thing I want to do is I want to turn our uh, transformation orientation or pivot point back to median. It's not necessary but just in case I did something later that I didn't want to mess up. Alright so there's our truss. Now let's turn on truss web which is an exact duplicate of the previous truss but we are going to subdivide this one a little different. Let's turn off truss and let's go into edit mode of truss web okay now the only thing we need to do is I need to add a vertice right here it's missing one okay so at this point I'm just gonna do a control R and it adds a vertice right there okay now what we're gonna do is we are going to subdivide this one face into a bunch of triangles all right so I'm gonna come up here to the merge tool and I'm gonna turn that on and make sure that split edges and faces is turned on okay then we are going to edit vertices and when I extrude a vertice and snap it to another vertice it's going to split that face but I need to turn on vertice snap okay so with this uh, ver vertex selected I hit E snap to this one now if you notice that face is now split okay so let's go back to vertex mode and continue to create this this web type shape okay now I believe this one is gonna go E to that one and then we're gonna go E to this one I'm just hitting E's I'm just hitting E's and snapping to the next vertice that's all I'm doing okay E snap that's all I'm doing and it's automatically splitting that face for me as I mosey on down this contraption here alright so there we go and we're gonna end right there so that's the last one um, this right here I probably didn't have to split I bet it's oh it actually splits it actually splits I went the wrong way did I please hold let me gather my thought yeah I went the wrong way on this one this first one is this first one does come straight across but this next one needed to go this direction so it's it's just like the rest of them so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to face I'm gonna select these two faces right click and I'm gonna dissolve face alright so now it's one again now let's go back to Ed uh, vertex mode select this one hit E select there and now that should be divided in that direction okay so now these are consistent going down that way alright so that's how you take care of that but I do know that this one didn't go from the top down to this corner alright it went straight across from this now we have a series of triangles that we can create our new webbing alright so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to face select hit all to select and hit I and the last operation we did with inset was individual polygons and no the last one I did was not individual polygons it was one polygon going all the way around I hit I again to get the individuals and now I want this to have a different thickness 
or width than our first one. I want the webbing to be smaller than the frame of this truss. So I'm going to go point zero two five. Okay, and then I'm going to delete the interior. Um, I'm going to delete the interior polygons like I did on the other one. Delete faces. So now we just have the web. Now the thing is, we don't need the we don't need the polygons that make up the outer part of this truss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the outside polygons and uh, delete them. So I'll be right back. So I have all those selected and I just hit delete, uh, maybe hit delete faces. And now I just have the inner part of the webbing of the truss. Okay. Now I could go in and do some cleanup work to make the polygon count lower and and I probably will but for this tutorial on how I make the frames okay um, just so I can make this keep this video as short as I can normally what I would do is I would see how these are there's two polygons right here I would delete all well let me show you. We might as well do it, right? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the polygons and I'm going to hit delete, but I'm only going to delete faces only. It's going to keep the edges and the vertices. Then I'll go to edge, edge mode and I'll select all these interior, all these interior edges, just like this. Just these interior edges. So let me do that and I'll be Hey everybody, I'm going to interrupt here for a second. During editing, I just figured out I screwed up. Can everybody say, Christopher, you're an idiot. I did not hit, uh, when I was deleting the interior, ed uh, these interior edges, I didn't pause the video in the correct spot and then when I re unpaused it or whatever I actually paused it I uh, yeah okay so I selected the interior edges and then I deleted those okay now I only have the outside edges of the webbing so we're going to select edges hit a to select all hit F to create a face that's the entire webbing in one piece okay then we're gonna turn on our truss so we turn on our truss so we can see it okay then we're going to come down to this bottom part see how the webbing is uh, right down the middle of our main truss alright we are going to edit let's turn on ghost here all right we're going to edit now there's some artifacts here because I screwed up and had to hurry up and do something now we are going to take uh, got to find out where the origin is with our web we want to change the origin to our 3d cursor which is right up here on this space right here so outside of edit mode right click set origin 3d cursor go back into edit mode and we're going to move this over to the left or on the x-axis g x point zero two five and notice how that moves this over a little bit so it's off center okay and now we're going to give it a thickness of point zero five all right this is some of the stuff that i that I messed up on the recording. All right, so we're gonna get out of um, we're gonna get out of Ghost, and we're gonna turn on face orientation, and we want our faces to be red, because solidify solidifies toward the red. So we're gonna face select 
hit A to select them all, Alt N at the same time, flip so they're all red. Then we're going to get out of edit mode because you don't need to be in edit mode to add a modifier. We're going to come over here to the modifier and we're going to add a solidify modifier and make that 0 0.05 meters and see how that thickens that up for you. Okay. So basically this is what I forgot to record. All right. So that's what we did next to make this webbing thick like this. All right. So back to your regularly scheduled programming. Be right back. Now we're going to work on the cross braces across the top. So let's turn on truss top and let's turn off truss. It's the same kind of a web. Uh, it's the same process of creating those other webs, except th this doesn't have a bunch of triangles. This is just a series going straight across from beam to beam. All right, so let's go into edit mode. Turn face select on and select all faces and let's do an eye and it's going to inset individually because that was the last function that we did with the inset eye command and I'm going to make this size 0 0.025 meters just like we did on the other one okay now we want to get rid of these interior faces so I'm going to hit delete faces and now we only have the exterior but we don't need these long sides because these long sides correspond with the actual beams of of the truss and the intermediate beam okay so what I'm going to do is I'm I have ghost mode on so I can select through and I'm going to select all of these outside uh, polygons and delete them so as soon as I do that I'll be right back okay I have those selected now I can just hit delete faces now I just have the cross members okay but they have no thickness okay there's a couple other changes I want to make all right remember like the the W webbing that we did it's split down the middle we need to make a couple changes all right I want to get rid of the interior um, edge on all of them except for the first one and the last one because those are only one section okay so what I'm going to do is I am going to select make sure face select select all except no, I don't, I'm not going to do select all. I'm going to just select the interior ones, not the first one or the last one. Okay, I'm going to select these because these two are fine up here. I'm going to hit delete. And I'm only going to delete faces only. I'm keeping edges and vert vertices. Okay. Now I'm going to, since I have the focus on there, I am going to edge select and I am going, you know, I'm going to make this easy. I'm going to go vertex select and I'm going to select these outer vert vertices like this. Okay, just like this because I don't want this triangle on that and that point on the end either. All right, so I'm going to select these outer vertices and that's going to that's going to delete any edge that is connected to it. It's going to delete this little one, this little one, and this one going down the middle. Okay? So, let me get those selected. I'll be right back. Okay, I have all those selected. Now I'm going to delete. And I'm going to delete vertice. Now I need to close in these polygons and this is just another simple thing with vertex select I'm going to select the vertices hit F and then I'm going to select these other two hit F twice and that's going to add 
the it's going to add an edge for that first F and the second F is going to add a face to that whole that whole series of edges so do it again these two F these two F F all right so I'm going to do that to the rest of them I will be right back so I have all of those created now okay now with these cross braces I want to do I want to do something one more little thing I believe because the dish itself let me turn on the reflector dish okay and let's go to shade shade smooth and not transparent okay and let's select one and focus in if you notice how this this series of edges is actually above the disc okay because the disc is curved but the these framing members that I've created so far go straight across so it's pretty much the cord of the curve and when we solidify these framing members we want to pull those down so they're below the actual dish surface okay right now they're above so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a series of loop cuts on each one of these polygons so I have I have vertices that I can pull pull back okay so let's turn off the dish and let's go back to our object and all I'm going to do is put in a I'm going to do three loop cuts on each one of these okay so I'm going to control R and there's three on that one hit enter and escape and do the same thing to these control R scroll three separations escape okay I'm going to do that to the rest of these and I'll be right back okay I have the loop cuts done for those all right now it is time to add some solidify modifier to it so let's check the orientation of our faces because we want the red to be on the bottom so let's go face orientation and we have some that are blue and some that are red so this one this one this one and this one are okay um, I don't know what else is okay so I'm gonna select these alt n flip select these alt n flip all right and I have these over here so I'll select these alt n flip and everything else oh <laughs> I turn the red ones that's okay they're all facing the same direction so let's select all of them again and do another alt n and flip them so the red is all on the bottom oops that didn't work that one's kind of weird looking how that happen? so let's select that face and let's alt n and flip that one so all the normals are facing in the same direction Okay. I think that's all we need to do let me double check everything else all right so all the red is facing down so let's get out of edit mode and let's go over here to our modifiers and add a solidify modifier and let's make that um, 0 0.05 0 0.05 And let's go ahead and apply that modifier. Oops. Apply, apply, apply. There we go. All right. So let's put together what we have done already. So let's come down here to truss and let's turn on truss. So we have those cross members going across just like that. Now we need to create the crossbars that are diagonal that goes from this point up to this point but that's why we created that weird looking propeller shape okay so let's turn off truss and turn off top and turn on 
truss diag. Okay, see how that little propeller shape is? Okay, now we need to do the same thing with this. So what we're going to do is turn off face orientation. Don't have to, you can keep face orientation on. But let's go into edit mode. Let's select it first, then go into edit mode. And what we're going to do is the same thing. We are going to face select A to select all of them. And we're going to hit I. And we're going to put 0 0.025. Okay. And we're going to delete those interior polygons or faces. And now we just have that frame. Now the outer ones this these outer ones we don't need just like our just like our top our top webbing that we did our cross braces okay so I'm going to uh, go to ghost mode and I'm going to select all these exterior lines uh, polys okay I'll finish that be right back Okay, I have them all selected. All I need to do is do delete faces. And now we just have those cross members just like this. But we want to give them some thickness, right? So we are, now we don't need to make any other changes to these. I think these will work out just fine. Other than we need to turn off uh, x-ray or ghost mode as I call it. And well, we have the doubles again, but yeah, we better clean that up because I forgot about that. So we need to undouble these, remember? All right, same process. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to face mode and we don't want the bottom ones. And we don't want the very top one. Okay. Because those are fine. Those are single. Alright. And we're going to delete faces only. Then we're going to go in again. And we are going to edge select and select all of. Actually we're going to go into vertices select. And we're going to select these vertices on the outside just like we did with the cross bracing and then we're going to delete those and it will delete any edge that's connected to those vertices so let me finish that and I'll be right back got those selected so we hit delete vertices and then we're going to close in these ends with that F and then the double F okay remember that F F, F. All right, I'll finish that. Okay, so now we have our new polygons, our new faces. Okay, so now we can go in and solidify all of these. So go to face select. Let's turn on face orientation to find out if we need to flip any. And we need to flip everything. Uh, pop V's or just to select these two bottom ones first. No. Select these two bottom ones first. I mean these two outer ones first. Let's flip those. And then select all and flip again. So now red is is facing us. Alright. And let's give them. Let's get out of edit mode. And do an add modifier solidify. And make that 0.05. And apply that modifier and then let's turn on truss and turn on top and there is our truss system just like that okay now we only need to make one of these okay but what we need to do is we need to take this cross member and this diagonal member and we need to mirror those to the other side okay oh let me do a save 
So this is what half of our truss system looks like. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, try this. I'm going to select the cross braces and the diagonals. All right. And I am going to make copies of those. I'm going to shift D escape. And with those two selections, with those two copies selected, I'm going to do a control J and join. Whoops. I'm going to do a control J and join those together. And we are going to call these truss uh, cross, truss cross for now. Okay. Now, I want my origins to be uh, where, they, where they originally were, down here at the bottom. Okay, so I had to make sure that I moved the origin of each one of these objects to its original location, which was down here. All right. And now I want to apply a mirror modifier. And I want that... And what that's going to do is going to make this a copy over here. All right. So let's do a modifier, mirror modifier, and see how that does that. Okay. So now I do not want to take truss and copy it over to here. And the reason I don't want to do that is because I, when we rotate this around, it's going to put a new truss, this truss, right here, and then continue this all the way around when we make our array. I hope that you'll see it happen. Okay. <clears throat> so we have uh, our truss system pretty pretty much getting there all right so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to make a copy of truss shift D escape and I'm gonna call this backup so I don't lose it I'm gonna put a BU at the end okay and then I'm going to select truss cross and I'm going to apply the mirror modifier to it. So now it's an actual 3D object all by itself. And I'm going to shift D escape. And I'm going to rename that to copy uh, to backup. Okay. And then I'm going to turn off the backups. Okay, and I'm going to take truss, cross, and I'm going to hold control, select truss, and I'm going to join those with control J, put those together. Okay, so now truss is one single object that has everything that I need except for this, this intermediate uh, beam, all right? But we haven't made that yet, okay? So we're gonna make that really quick. So what did I call that? That was FT something. Let me find it. You know what I'm gonna do? I just kind of changed my mind. I'm gonna come down to truss, truss, turn on truss. And I'm only going to select, I'm going to go into edit mode of truss. And no, I don't want truss. I want truss backup. Yeah, let's go into edit mode for truss backup. And I am going to select I'm going to select these faces here because 
this intermediate beam that we're making is actually the same thing as the top of the truss. So I'm going to select all these. I might need some ends. Well, I can put some ends on them when I'm done. That's right. All right. I just want that top piece. And I'm going to shift D, escape, and then hit P for new selection. And we're going to call this truss inner for intermediate uh, truss. Okay. It's not really a truss. It's more of a beam. All right, so I have that. So I'm going to turn off truss backup, and I'm going to go into oh, to get out of edit mode. Select truss inner, and go into edit mode. And I need to put a couple faces, so I'm going to select this one, put a face on it. And down here, I'm going to select these four and put a face on that end. Okay. Turn off ghost to see how that looks. Okay. I think that's going to be just fine. Now what I need to do is, I think I need to rotate that. I'm going to, where's my... Let me get out of edit mode. Okay, so now I gotta find the origin of this. The origin I have set right here. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to turn on truss, select truss, Okay, and I need to move, I need to move, I think I need to move the origin of truss inner to this empty that I have sitting out here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to shift S, cursor to selected, select truss inner, right click, origin to 3D cursor. All right, now I'm going to take truss inner and I'm going to rotate on the Z 10 degrees. Bam! Just like that. Okay. So this is what we're going to array. All of this stuff right here. So I am going to select truss inner and truss. And I'm going to join those together. Whoops, I accept. I want, I'm going to get out of edit mode. I, okay, edit mode. Inner truss, control, truss, and then control J to put those together. All right. Now I want to take the origin of truss, which is everything now, and I want to move the origin to the 3D cursor. So right click, origin, 3D cursor. Now it's time for the array. I'm going to do a save. And now I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to select the truss. I'm going to add an array modifier to it. And we are going to use, we're, we need 18 sections. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need 18 of these because they're 20 degrees each and I'm going to not do relative offset I'm going to do object offset and our object offset is going to be our empty BAM and there's our frame now the only thing left to do on our frame is there is, okay, we have 
we have this cross member coming across so I'll need to add one down here that goes all the way around but that's just gonna be um, I'm just gonna make a, a simple um, cube bring those across and then array that the exact same way so that is just an easy way to make a frame for our satellite dish so let's turn on our dish and I'll show you something that I was talking about I'm going to turn on uh, reflector screen notice that those cross braces are are in inside of our dish okay if I go to truss now the array modifier has not been applied yet so I only need to work on the original piece okay so let's turn off that from view so we see our original piece and if I go in to edit mode and select all of these all of these vertexes vertices that are inside of here okay I'm just gonna do one I'm not gonna um, we're not gonna do this for this tutorial this is just uh, this is just editing stuff um, you know fine-tuning things but if we selected all of all of these vertices that go down this direction like that all the ones that go down the middle and let's turn off see-through stuff and if I well we don't need well let's go ahead and leave those on just for now just because but if I did a G Z hold down my shift key we can manipulate the shape of these cross braces okay so you'd bring them below the the surface of the shield okay I didn't do any fine-tuning stuff for this video because it, it's gonna be long enough as it is but before you do your array you can fine-tune your cross braces so they don't interfere with your shield another way to do this would I can do let's do a control Z all right let's turn on turn our array back on click out of that get out of edit mode the other way to do this is simply select the dish itself and move the dish up Z a little bit so they don't interfere with those cross braces so many different ways to fine-tune this okay now I'm going to be working on this I'm going to be working on the satellite uh, the the radio telescope a little bit more before our next video but our next video is um, I should almost have the radio telescope ready for prime time use so to speak into the sim so after I get my edits going I got a lot of cleanup to do as soon as I get that done the next video that I'm going to put out for this uh, deep space network radio telescope is going to be the animation we're going to we're going to animate it on the azimuth right around this this tape this turntable and also we're going to change the tilt of the dish so it's going to have a couple motions when we bring it into the sim so we made our frame and now I'm going to do some more editing fix it up you know fix up my telescope and then I'm going to record the process of animating this for the sim so I hope you enjoyed uh, this video I hope you learned something out of the video I I, I hope you would subscribe if you would uh, hit the notification bell and if you feel inclined to support what I do uh, buymeacoffee.com slash my physical world and I will see you guys on the next deep space network video see you guys later have a great day